Hey folks, welcome to Camp Update 15 now. <laughs> Just keeps on going this series. Thanks very much for clicking on the video. If you made it to this point, I really appreciate it. I've obviously made some changes to the camp. Today's episode was focused on the roof. I'm going to explain exactly what I've done, why I've done it, and I'll talk about some of the tools that I've used. I'm going to let this boil up, get some coffee on, and then just show you around the camp. So you can probably see behind me this wood frame that I've built. I was debating for a long time whether to go for a full wood roof or whether to do something like this that's not completely wood, it's not completely kind of natural materials. And I think really if I was going to do a full roof, you know, just, just wood shingles or something like that, or just, just any full roof design that's made of wood, a, it's going to take a long time, it's very time consuming, but B, I might as well build a log cabin if I was going to do that. You know, essentially it would be a house type structure and it just defeats the object of what I'm trying to do here, which is really build something a little bit different. You know, if I, if I used wood shingles or I used like an apex type roof, I may as well have gone and built a log cabin and there's loads of log cabins out there. I wanted to build something that's completely different that, you know, is, hasn't really been seen before. So it's, yeah, it's kind of a, a glorified camp and it's, you know, a fort, if you want to call it, a fortress. But really, you know, it, I've learned a lot along the way, as I've said in previous videos. So I was actually trolling around on Instagram and uh, looking at kind of, there's loads of people's different camps. Uh, and I stumbled across a really cool shelter that a guy built. I think his name is Greg. Uh, he's called, his Instagram's called Scablands Bushcraft. I'll pop a link to him. Um, and he had this design, maybe not as big, but he had a, a nice lean-to shelter, this kind of wood frame design, and, and the same thing, the tarp that kind of rolled out. And I loved the fact that I saw some photos of his shelter with the tarp rolled up when it was kind of snowing and wet, and then some photos of the tarp rolled back. And I just thought, that's exactly what I need for the practical, you know, the, the practical side of this camp. That's exactly what I needed. So thanks so much, Greg. I really appreciate it. Thank you for the inspiration. So what I've done here with this structure is just... I made some simple, very simple log cabin uh, notches. I buried this this one uh, pole here about three feet under, in the ground. Admittedly, I probably could have burnt the ends of it uh, just to preserve the wood of it for a bit longer. I didn't do that. So, you know, I, I've done this same with the hunting tower. I didn't burn the ends. I just buried the poles three three feet deep. They go down into the kind of gravel. And um, yeah, it, you know, it, it's not going to last as long as it would if I had burnt it. But it will still last plenty enough and it's, it's easy enough to replace. So that essentially that was the main pole that I've buried. The other pole on the far side I've lashed to that tree, that big Scots pine tree. So it's essentially the, the, the weight is just get, get resting on the ground. Made some notches, put in a nice long kind of thick cross member there. And then just, yeah, just, just put some cross members of sticks along the edge, making sure that the uh, thicker parts are at this end and the thinner parts are at the far end because it's on an angle like this. You, you may just be able to see, I think you can see the angle. It looks like it's flowing into my shelter if it would rain, but it's not. It's actually overlapping that shelter so it goes right over the top. But I've got the thicker ends of these horizontal, well, these sort of vertical logs there. The thicker end is up this end and the thinner end is that end. And that's just to help the taper uh, and the runoff of when the tarp is on it. Ideally, if I had time on my side, uh, and I could spend all, all the time I wanted here, then I would just notch everything and do it all properly. But such is life, this is the way I've done it. And I'm happy enough with what I've done. So that's the frame, that's the wood frame that I've built there. Took most of the day, took pretty much a day to do that. So hopefully you can see, I know the light's slightly different up here, but I'm up in the, uh, the tower. And here's what the frame looks like from above. And you can see that I've got this tarp. This is a heavy duty tarp. It's not like the other ones that I've used. It's, it's pretty tough and durable. It will certainly last, certainly last a year because my other ones have lasted a year and they're the cheap ones. But I'd like to think it would last maybe, maybe three, two, maybe three years. Uh, so it's heavy duty, it's got eyelets on it. I've not had the need to use it. But all this does really is it just rolls out. And, I, and that, that's what I wanted. That's the beauty of this type structure because when it's not raining, I can open camp right up and I can be much closer to nature. It lets all that light in when I'm filming in the camp itself. I need it to be light because otherwise the camera settings I have to boost and it goes all grainy and I don't get very good quality. So I need that light. If I had a fixed roof on here, it'd be like filming inside and everything would be dark. I'd also have the issue of 
the smoke from the fire you know i'd have to get a fireplace and do it all properly uh, with the chimney and things like that i know you guys came up with some great suggestions of clay but you know this is just what i'm going to go for for now and it, and it works so essentially that rolls out all the way along there to the end and i'll only do that if it's raining if it's you know heavy rain so it, it's not essentially going to have enough time to puddle or pull and if it does i'll just poke it and let the water run off so that comes all the way back down here and rests up against there i've also created an overhang you can see where i've notched it there a nice overhang of probably 12 12 inches or so and that way this shelter down here when i roll it out this shelter will always be covered there won't be a risk of it dripping off the edge and going straight down into that shelter so that's all covered there obviously i had the issue of this other scots pine tree that goes right through the middle of the camp just just down there you can see where it goes down so i couldn't get this to come all the way back here so what i did is i nailed in a little uh, a second piece of tarp the off cut of this tarp which was overhanging that side I, I cut it off and that now goes over and runs over this shelter now i'm going to redo the top of this shelter it's not right at the moment but any rain that hits eventually i've got to still pin some corners down over there hit there rain off that shelter run off that shelter and it all runs off i'm pleased with this setup it's you know it's basic it's simple but it's a good setup and that's why you know got to thank greg really on instagram for uh for scablands bushcraft for coming up with the idea i don't know where greg got it from but yeah it's a, it's a great idea it's a really really good idea so thanks greg appreciate it buddy I've got the horizontal members, cross members, underneath these vertical ones. And if you don't do that, you'll end up getting pulling and it sags. But by having these ones running as the highest, you know, right on the top, any rain that hits, it's got a much better chance of getting down and off the shelter. If I had those underneath the horizontal ones, it's just going to sag. Lesson learnt with that shelter when I did it. That's what I mean by if you don't put the vertical ones on the top. Can you see here I've put the horizontal ones on the top and it stopped the rainwater running that way and it just sags like that it just collects the rainwater so don't do it that way i learnt my lesson there do it this way where that vertical runoff is always on the top to help with the runoff so under here now this is permanent this tarp this part of the tarp it's permanent and it overlaps up there and you can see that now that shelter is always going to stay dry I'm going to redo this, this whole roof of this shelter and this tarp. I'm not happy with it. I'm going to redo it. I'm going to build up the sticks on this side because I don't like the green here. Little things to do with the bed. That shelter's still okay. And I'm going to redo the fire pit at some point. So you can see from this, this little bit of tarp there, that's actually permanent now. So that will always stay up. This is how it will look all the time. Whenever it rains, I just roll that over. So the fire pit down there, if you can see it, all the smoke can come out clear, nice and easy. Don't get smoke in the in the uh, shelter. I can I can adjust it to as far out as I want. I'm you know if it's if it's sort of not raining too much, and I want to keep the fire going and, and keep it out, I can just roll it maybe to the second log there, and that way I've still got lots of light coming in. Or if it's really strong rain, heavy rain, I could roll it right to the end. So it's just it's a great adjustable, simple wood frame tarp shelter. I'm not happy with this at all. This whole roof of this tarp, I'm gonna, this shelter, sorry, I'm gonna redo, take the tarp off. That's the cheaper tarp, just so you can see. It's, it's got, it's the one with all those square stitches kind of in it. Those tarps are, are rubbish, they're naff. You know, they, the sticks just punch holes through them. Nothing compared to this. That's the heavy duty one, way thicker. So I'm gonna replace this with a heavy duty tarp also I'm a bit funny like this, but I like the darker colour. I'm not a fan of this kind of garish light, light green. I like the sort of dark drab olive. So got, I've got another tarp on the way. I'm going to redo this whole, this whole shelter here. Take that stuff off the roof. Put sticks along this bit here. I'm not happy with this bit. I don't like seeing the green there. You know, I want to try and keep it, I want to try and keep it looking as natural as possible where I can. Obviously I've got a tarp up, so. Dog shelter's going well still, moss is growing on it still. But it's coming along, you know, it's, it's not perfect, I realise, but for me, it does everything I want it to do. I'm getting it ready for winter. You know, I've got, got some logs here in the log store, but they're a bit punky. But this is, this is it, this is the, the wood structure, the wood shelter, Camp Update 15.
and I'm pleased with it and it works, it's practical. It might not look pretty, but it's practical. And I'm starting to veer towards that practicality. Fire pit is gonna get an update. I'm not happy with it still because that drum, that kind of alloy, car alloy, or car wheel, sorry, is, it's too small. You know, it's too small to cook in. So I'm gonna update that again. It's a constant learning curve. It's a constant, you're constantly thinking and changing. What can I improve? What can I do better? I don't think I'm going to expand the camp anymore. It's not going to get any bigger. It's just going to be smaller things. I might have a little tool shed or something like that, but I'm going to keep it like this. So there is a kind of flat lay of the tools that I've used for this little build. I'll just run you through them quickly just to help answer any questions. So this is the shovel. It comes in one, two, three, four different uh, pieces. It's a folding shovel. It's by Five Joy. Uh, they gave me this a while ago, uh, over a year ago now. Uh, I, I like it. It's a, it's a good quality shovel. You know, I'm not usually a fan of, of things with folding parts, but because there's always a weak point. But actually, I put a lot of stress on this. I built a tower with this. Obviously, I built this structure with this. I've done a lot with it, and it's uh, you can have it like that. So you can use it as a hoe, or you can just lock it. It locks into place. It's got in the in the uh, back section. I'll just show you quickly. I'm not going to go into. There's a whole review on my channel on this. But in the handle itself, it's got blade, knife blade, saw. It's kind of an all-round multi-tool. Uh, and in the, in the, even in the back here as well, sorry, it's got a, uh, I think it's a fire steel. Yeah, a little fire steel uh, and a whistle there as well. So it's, 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 it's got everything. It's got a sharp edge to it, which you can use as an axe. I personally don't use it as an axe. I have done in the past. But that side of it is a blade there, sorry, is actually sharpened as an axe. And that's just helpful for me because that's about the depth that I dig down to as well. And it folds down into, into super small, into about there. Well, to give you an idea, it folds down into that carry case. So it's nice and small and compact and it's ideal for me. The axe or hatchet that I'm using is the same old trusty Husqvarna hatchet hobby. I've had this absolutely years. Most of you have seen me use this throughout all of the camp update videos. Um, it's probably my first hatchet, pr first proper hatchet. Uh, Husqvarna is, is a kind of good value for money. I'm not, I didn't get sponsored for this. This They are just a good value for money. Um, Axe company, Swedish, hand forged in Sweden. The only disadvantage is it's got quite a fat blade profile. It's quite wide. So it's good for splitting kindling, uh, but it's not so good for the kind of felling and, and you know, the intricate work. It's had a bash this handle, I've absolutely mashed it around so still doing me well. I should probably make get another leather collar for it and make one. I need to maintain that, keep it up. I had to sharpen it once during that thing. The saw is the Boreal 21 with the Sydney Rancher blade. I think it's the Sydney Rancher 2 or something. Uh, it's the aggressive blade for the deadwood. It's got the, the kind of serrated teeth. Uh, it doesn't have the clearing teeth which you need for kind of greener wood. Uh, I believe it's called the Sydney Rancher Blade. Don't hold me on that. But yeah, it's a nice, easy folding saw, bow saw. And it's just handy because it packs down to that. Again, easily to transport when I'm coming out here in the woods. Knife is uh, Virtus Utilis. I used a number of different knives, but this one is a nice beefy one. And I just enjoy using a kind of thick, beefy bushcraft knife when I'm battening and doing kind of harder, harder things and building things less so for the intricate work and that's just in a leather sheath that, from a previous knife. I've been through so many different pairs of gloves I really wanted to find a decent kind of high quality pair that would last me and I'm, I'm using I'm carrying kind of wet mouldy logs with sharp limbs sticking out uh, carrying hot items. I did a lot of research and uh, the guys at Crude Sweden uh, sent me a pair and these are the Jura gloves they're leather they're made from high quality A grade cowhide leather and then they're individual they're from they're from Sweden and they're individually hand stitched each glove. And then they go through like an eight step finishing process. And I cannot tell you how happy I am with them. They are super, super durable. I've abs I've absolutely bashed these and mashed these around. Um, you know, I've used them a lot over the past few months I've been using these and I'm very pleased with them. Uh, you, they're, they're waxed, they use natural oils in them. I will definitely continue to be using these and um, abusing them as, as they say. I do need to probably put another layer of wax on them because they've, they've just had a beating. But for me, they're just handy. They've got the short kind of cuff to them. I don't know what you guys call this 
this area in different countries. I call that the cuff, where you'd have kind of cuff links. Uh, easy to get on and off where they have a short cuff. I'll pop a link to kind of all these tools in the description below. So that is it for Camp Update 15. I remember in Camp Update 11 when I built this tower, that like I said, that's it, I'm not gonna build anymore, I'm not gonna do anymore. And uh, that didn't last. It's just one of those things, you know, you, 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 I come out here, I'm sure some of you guys have your little, you know, camps and shelters, and you just always find ways to improve it. You see things in the books, you read things, you get inspired, you wanna go out there and uh, give it a go. Sometimes it doesn't always work out how you imagine it was in the book or how you saw it in the book. So you put your, your own touch on things and that's kind of what I've done here. I've applied things that I've learned in books and then put my own touch on it. And you know, I, it's quite a unique looking camp. I, I haven't really seen it, any camps out there looking like this. And that's why I wanted to build a camp and not, or a fort and not a log cabin because there's loads of those out there in the world. There's one of these that looks like this. So it's, you know, thanks so much for everyone who's joined me along on this journey. It's been a long one, you know, Camp Update 15 and Camp Update 16 is going to be coming soon because I've got more ideas of things that I want to tweak and change. And whilst I'm out here, I'm not just building, I'm enjoying nature. I'm looking around and just taking it all in. There's often times off camera where I'll turn the camera off for nearly an hour sometimes and just sit there, have a coffee, enjoy my surroundings. You know, what you see on camera is not always me just building, I am actually relaxing and enjoying it but i'm looking forward to coming here in the winter we had some snow last year it wasn't a lot but for the south of england it was nice to have some snow so i'm looking forward to hopefully a bit of snow here in the winter definitely going to be doing some overnighters soon so thanks so much for watching this episode if you uh, enjoyed it please subscribe uh, if you'd like to help support the channel i've just released um, a new t-shirt design which is my woodsman design is up on my website taofficial.com there's other uh, clothing designs on there as well like my logo but this one has my actual polish levu tent which i camp out in in some of my videos it's an actual picture taken from a picture of it with the wood stove as well and a nice river flowing by so if you'd like to support the channel definitely check that out i'll put a link to that in the description below thanks so much guys and i'll see you real soon in the next video oh yeah and before i forget check out dad's channel ta fishing i'll put a link to that in the uh, description below we're trying to get him to 200,000 subscribers so please head on over and hit the subscribe button all in the description below ta fishing